Hi, this is Chris Brunhaver. I'm the Senior Speaker Design Engineer here at PS Audio, and I'm here on a Sunday uh, sitting in the big kahuna seat here. This is Paul McGowan's office. Um, I'm kind of wandering around the building as, as he tends to do in his videos, showing off different parts of our facility and answering our, our uh, questions here. Uh, I'm going to be doing daily updates as far as uh, YouTube videos, just as Paul has, and to, to sort of double our efforts there as far as YouTube outreach. There's uh, over 5,000 emails that have yet to be answered, so we, we've got a lot of uh, opportunity to respond to people. So uh, this one's, uh, so I'm, I'm choosing ones that are sort of based off of uh, speakers and rooms and acoustic stuff. And uh, this is one about subwoofer phase. It's from Cathal, I'm sorry, Cothel in Ireland. Um, and he says, Hi Paul, greetings from Ireland. I have a Cyrus system comprising of two bi-amped power amps, power supplies in a CD player, playing through Proact bookshelf speakers. I recently bought a pair of second-hand REL subs. Great, we, we love the REL subs. Um, I'm wondering whether the subs should always be in phase with each other or with the main speakers. Any information on this would be hugely insightful. The system sounds totally different in both cases, or should I say substantially different. Many thanks. Up Ireland, Cothel. Um, well, uh, that's a great question. Um, the simple answer is um, it's hard to say. You can't always assume that the subwoofer should be in phase with each other and with the main speakers. Um, and by in phase, I mean the polarity, meaning um, if you were to have the, s the speakers be 180 degrees out of phase or the subs be 180 degrees out of phase, they would be in opposition to each other and potentially canceling, you would think. But it turns out that depending on the crossover um, and the response of the speakers and the distance from the speakers and from room boundaries and things, you can get different uh, requirements uh, as far as phase. And so, um, it, you know, to get optimal summing through the crossover. So uh, the thing that you want to do is actually, if you're just listening to subwoofers and don't have any measurement equipment, is to choose the, set, the phase setting that is the loudest, because that means you're getting the most summing, uh, the most positive interference through the crossover region between the speakers and the subs. So they're, they're summing with each other. You don't want them to cancel. Um, and then you can sort of dial down the level of the sub or pull the subwoofer crossover frequency down in order to smooth that out if, it's, if you're noticing a peak um, at particular frequency range uh, where they sum. Um, but uh, to take it a step further, if, if you're more technically inclined, um, getting a measurement mic could be hugely helpful. So I like some of the inexpensive USB measurement mics on the market from folks like uh, Mini DSP, their U-Mic 1. Um, Parts Express, uh, Behringer even, there's others. You want to get one that is, um, you know, calibrated, that has some sort of low frequency calibration file. Um, but this can be really helpful to measure very simply, um, you know, if things are summing correctly or not, if there's a dip in the response. Uh, and you can look at it just one measurement to the other of, you know, in phase, out of phase, which one at the crossover point is, is summing better. Um, on top of that, um, adding in multiple subs, you can optimize spatially over multiple seats. Um, and there's some tools to do things like that. There's some free ones. Uh, one of the ones you might check out is the uh, multi-sub optimizer program, which is a Windows program that's freeware that you can use with, um, with or without DSPs to look at um, the response of multiple subwoofers in room and optimizing those. Um, th there are things like Room EQ Wizard, there's a bunch of tutorials on, another free piece of software. Again, you'd need a measurement mic, but um, that can be very powerful and it's a very small investment compared to a good hi-fi system, maybe $100 for the mic or less. Um, so it depends on how technically inclined you are, but um, you know, I'd also take and in, in if you have a chance, read the multi-sub paper by Todd Welty, Alan Devontier from Harman, which is maybe Ten plus years ago was released, or some of the work of Earl Geddes on multi-subs have some very good um, recommendations on that stuff. But again, um, you know, uh, I, I would say start in phase with um, with the subs in phase with each other and with the the satellites, and then keep the subwoofers um, in phase with each other and go out of phase with the satellite speakers with your your bookshelves and see what sounds the best. Go from there. 
Uh, anyway, thanks for the great question and look forward to answering more. And uh, cheers, we'll, we'll talk to you guys soon. Thank you, bye-bye. <laughs>